Tonight, a long, frustrating commute home across the GTA as this city is hit by its biggest blast of winter yet. How long have you been waiting for? Like three hours. From TTC closures to road delays to flight cancellations, and the snow is still falling. Plus, police say a significant update is expected in the Bruce MacArthur case tomorrow, and... That's insane. That's just too much. No, they're just gouging the, the, the regular driver and commuter now. If you take Highway 407, get ready to shell out even more in road tolls. We start with a live look downtown. You can barely see the lights from the CN Tower just making their way through the storm as this snow has not let up all day and it isn't expected to for a few hours yet. Let's go straight to our Colette Kennedy, who's been tracking the weather for us all day and joins us now live. Colette, no doubt this is the biggest storm we have seen this winter. It is. Uh, was that downtown? Because uh, That was allegedly uh, downtown. <laughs> Trust us, that was a shot of the downtown core. Hard to tell, right? We could yeah. put up almost any city there the way it's so disguised from all the snowfall. And it is still coming down. But, hey, we've already set a record here. In terms of what we're seeing for this date in history, and this is at Pearson, the previous snowfall record, 13.4 centimeters. So we're going to end up, this is not where, it, this won't be the end of it. Let me put it that way. But so far, at least 22 centimeters have fallen. So just just absolutely crushing that old record. Not all official yet of what those numbers are going to be and still the snow coming down. We continue with the winter storm warning that is for the city and areas surrounding uh, Mississauga and towards Brampton up towards Vaughan. Uh, we're seeing this as well for Richmond Hill and for Markham, Oshawa, Pickering, all in that because we're looking at totals around 25 centimeters, especially closer to the lakeshore. So not additional, but totals. Minus 11 at the moment, but that temperature is still going to be climbing through the overnight hours. It feels like minus 18 because because of the strong winds we're still seeing. These are the sustained winds. The gusts are even heavier and stronger than this, coming 30, 40 kilometers an hour. This is a system, but I really want to broaden it so you can see, because we know the snow is falling. It got a little bit lighter for a couple of hours there, and now we're reporting heavy snow once again. We still have to get through this mass here moving east before we'll be done with it. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in that corridor, that's when we're going to see it moving out of the GTA. Unfortunately, because the winds will still be strong, it'll still be blowing snow around and we'll have drifting snow even into the morning hours, plus some residual flurries we're likely to be seeing as we head through the day Tuesday. These are additional amounts we're looking at on top of what we've already seen before this moves out in those early morning hours. I will have more on what's to come behind this system because very cold air on the way, Mike. That's coming up. We'll deal with the snow when we've got the cold still to come. Thanks, Colette. You're welcome. Well, let's talk about a look at the conditions on the roads. Motorists had to contend with getting home tonight. This is Viz on Front Street at Spadina around 7.30 tonight. Not a ton of traffic. Maybe many people tried to get out early to get home, but as you can see, the road's just covered in snow. Lengthy commutes all over the place. We want to show you vehicles crawling along the DVP earlier tonight at places it is at a standstill in several locations northbound at this hour. OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt tweeting last hour officers have responded to approximately 100 crashes on GTA highways since 3 o'clock this afternoon. Let's go now to our Adrian Chung who joins us live from Kennedy Station. Adrian, the winter weather has caused some real problems and delays for commuters out there. It certainly has. I mean, standing out here, I can tell you that the snow comes at you sideways. The wind is bone chilling. It's enough to cut you in two. And really, we've been out here for a few hours now, and the snow absolutely has not let up. It's enough uh, for the TTC to shut down its Line 3 service here in Scarborough running from here at Kennedy Station out east to Scarborough Center. But certainly that is not the only kind of problems it's been causing tonight. Delays, delays, delays. No one is getting anywhere quickly in this mess. How long have you been waiting for? Like three hours. You've been waiting for three hours. The TTC shut down Line 3, the Scarborough RT, right before rush hour, with worries about visibility reduced from the blowing snow and ice buildup on the tracks. What about uh, everybody else? Is uh, patience wearing pretty thin here or what? Uh, I think so. People are getting a bit irritated, a bit tired. But you can't blame them. It's been a long day. And all they can do is keep waiting. This is really ridiculous. Among the hundreds of others hoping to get onto the shuttle buses. People have been waiting for a long time, waiting for bus after bus. This one is completely packed, yeah. so you'll just have to wait for the next one. 
20 minutes, half hour. There's no communication, no nothing. The blowing snow has been relentless all night, and so too have been the delays. And these shuttle buses running alongside Line 3 are the quickest way for people to get home tonight. All day long, it's been tough to get to work or even do work, especially for those who must work, no matter the rain, sleet, or snow. If there's snow's not cleared, then we don't deliver. It's not worth the risk of injury. The city's two airports doing all they can to manage the runways while having some delays and cancellations. On the roads, not much better. The OPP warning drivers to take their time, even if plows have cleared the way. The traffic uh, is light uh, for the most part, but the problem is that also means traffic has more space to speed up. If that happens, there's also an opportunity for people to maybe go faster than what the conditions should allow. You don't want to be doing that. And every Torontonian, no matter how long it takes, all hoping to get home and get warm. Just hope everyone gets home safe and happy, safe and alive. So certainly, Mike, a lot of frustrations out here, but there have also been plenty of people on Twitter tonight praising the work of TTC employees working through these absolutely treacherous conditions. And as we heard Colette say, that the snow will continue falling for the next several hours into the early morning hours. And even details like whether or not schools will open or whether buses will run, those details will have to be figured out. The TDSB says that they will make a decision at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll send it back to you for now, we'll Mike. Certainly be watching for that. Get inside and get warm, Adrian. Thank you. A reminder, when it comes to snow plowing, you can check the status of the City of Toronto's snow clearing efforts. There's a live map, PlowTO, you can get to from the City of Toronto website. It shows the actual live locations of snow plows and color codes in that based on how long ago they went by your local street. You can find links to this on the City of Toronto website. As Adrian mentioned, flights at Pearson Airport have been uh, affected by today's storm. At one point, one in four flights was cancelled or delayed. And we are seeing many of those cancellations pushing forward to tomorrow. This is tomorrow morning. Already some cancelled flights there. The airport warning about delays and cancellations into the morning as a residual effect from tonight's weather. If you have a flight tomorrow, the airport recommends you check ahead on its status. Now, we have been tracking the storm all evening long and updating our live blog about the story on our website. This is something we'll get back at again early in the morning. That's, of course, when we're expecting, as Adrian was saying, the official word from school boards about the status of school buses or other closures. So you can take a look at that. That's a look that's happening at the, uh, with the storm in Toronto. And, of course, this has hammered all of southwestern Ontario as well. The stormy weather leading to class cancellations at the University of Windsor, St. Clair College, Lambden College. Windsor-Essex school buses were also cancelled and high school exams delayed until later in the week. The snow continuing throughout the evening and temperatures expected to drop. Well, now to some of the other news we are tracking tonight. Alleged serial killer Bruce MacArthur has a court date tomorrow morning. And Toronto police say a, quote, significant development is expected. MacArthur is charged with the murders of eight men who had connections to the gay village. The remains were found at a home on Mallory Crescent, where MacArthur stored his landscaping equipment. Seven of them in planters, one in the ravine behind the property. Well, last November, a judge set his trial date for January of next year. And closing arguments began today for the man accused of killing and dismembering a woman found behind a butcher shop back in 2016. Defense lawyers for Ian Hobbs say... The evidence against him is circumstantial, Ohab pleading guilty to causing an indignity to a body, but not guilty to second-degree murder. Ohab has admitted he cut up Melissa Cooper's body nearly three years ago, but says she died of a drug overdose in his apartment. Defense lawyer Philip Kluckman told the, uh, Kluckmack told the courtroom that Ohab panicked after finding Cooper dead and, while under the influence of drugs, decided to dispose of her body. The 30-year-old woman went missing in April of 2016. Her torso was found behind Charlie's Meat and Seafood on Broadview Avenue soon after. Some of her remains were never found. And Toronto families could soon be shelling out more cash for city services. The city's budget process launched today, and it means rising water and garbage rates on top of rising property taxes. City Hall reporter Lauren Pelly has the details. 
crunch the numbers and for an average Toronto household, you could be spending around $220 more per year. Now, we got those numbers based on some new service hikes recommended by city staff. Toronto families could see a more than 2.5% increase in their property taxes. That's tied to the rate of inflation. Staff are also calling for a hike in water rates. If approved by council, those would go up by 3%. There could also be a more than 2% increase for garbage collection. Now, staff also want to phase out a rebate program that gives you money back for using smaller bins, basically an incentive to waste less. And of course, there's that planned 10 cent TTC fare hike we previously told about that's already come under fire from transit advocates. We heard today that land, uh, land transfer tax revenues last year were lower than projected. Bad news, of course, when you're trying to balance a budget. Now, the budget chief says he hopes that millions for things like Toronto community housing will come from higher up. We can't do it alone. Uh, to suggest that the resident, the city of Toronto can do this by ourselves is, is, is not, I, I think, uh, proper. We need those uh, partnerships from the I mean, federal government in particular. Now, right now in this $13 billion budget, there's actually millions that aren't really accounted for. The city is banking on that federal funding coming in, as well as some unclear city cuts to balance things out. But that uncertainty has some councillors wondering what could be on the chopping block. So this is not a balanced budget. It's nothing close to a balanced budget. Uh, in just glancing at the high-level sheets, I've already found $79 million in magic money. Uh, savings that they won't tell us where they're going to come from. That state of good repair on things like transportation, on our roads, uh, on things like uh, TCHC housing is actually growing in this budget. And, and so I want to make sure that, that, that we're not leaving after this term of council uh, with, with a financial state for our city uh, far worse off than, uh, th than it would have been if we made the appropriate investments in our public services and, and not just uh, kind of hid behind uh, this inflationary tax increase. Now, this is just the first step in the budget process, and those councillors and members of the public will have plenty of time to weigh in. There will be two public presentations scheduled for February 7th and 11th, and the final budget will be at a special city council meeting for approval in March. That was our City Hall reporter, Lauren Pelly. Now, Mayor John Tory was in Ottawa today, joining forces with the mayors of Canada's largest cities in lobbying the Prime Minister for more emergency federal funding to help with a number of urgent needs. Building tomorrow's great Canadian cities takes decades of sustained planning and mayors are already working and looking out well beyond the current 10-year funding horizon. In a meeting with Justin Trudeau and some senior cabinet ministers, the big city mayors said they urgently need cash to help with the housing costs driven in part by the surge of asylum seekers. They also want money to help with the added cost of policing in the wake of legalized marijuana. But their biggest ask is for more funding for public transit, $35 billion over 10 years. Drivers who use the 407 can expect to start paying more as of Friday. I'm Greg Ross. I'll tell you how much rates are going up by and what sections of the highway are going to be hit the hardest. That's coming up.
this was a scene earlier this month after Metrolinx canceled an express train between Union Station and Brampton. Well, now, after getting an earful about overcrowding on other trains from both passengers and Brampton's mayor, it's getting ready to put that trip back on the schedule. Metrolink says the 4.50 p.m. express train to Bramley GO station will resume February 13th. And drivers who use the 407 are going to start paying more. Rates are going up as much as 14% on Friday. The increase depends on when and where you use the toll highway. Greg Ross explains. Having to pay more to use the 407 was not welcome news for many commuters today. That's insane. That's just too much. No, they're just gouging the, the, the regular driver and commuter now. The increase has some regular 407 customers considering other alternatives. But that could make your day a lot longer. A lot longer, yeah. I'm going to have to leave earlier. But it's worth it because you don't want to pay that extra money? Yeah, well, if my bill's already really high, right? Yeah, I think they've always been too high. Now that they went up, it's just, it's, I, I probably won't even bother taking it again. The increases will vary depending on which section of the 407 drivers use and whether or not they're driving in peak hours. The biggest increase will hit drivers heading eastbound during the afternoon rush between Highway 427 and Highway 404. Rates will go up seven cents per kilometer during this time. To make that trip now cost $17.54. Drivers on Friday will start paying $19.33. To drive that same stretch of the 407 during peak hours in the morning, drivers will see a 13% increase from $16.49 to $18.01. And the main reason for those increases? We're not going to have a toll road that has drivers placed in stop and go traffic. We want traffic moving at the limit. And there's uh, the purpose of a toll road is to provide an option to drivers where they can pay to use the roadway and arrive safely and reliably to do the things they need to do the most. And that's exactly why some drivers we spoke to today say they are willing to pay extra. It's cost effective. I have used it. It's worth if I go to Hamilton or something. Yeah, I'll use it to miss the traffic. It's, it's worth it then. Representatives from the 407 say the increases will also help pay many other costs as well. The policing of the road, the maintenance, the snow removal, which we're about to see, is all paid for from uh, toll dollars. The rates officially go up on February 1st. Commuters can go to the 407 website to find out how much more their commute is going to cost. Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. A panel of Superior Court judges hearing a case today trying to determine if the Ontario government acted in bad faith when it cancelled the province's basic income pilot project. Now, the program allowed 4,000 low-income people in Hamilton, Brantford, Thunder Bay and Lindsay to receive monthly payments. Ms. Farah Morali tells us many of those people were in court today. There was an empty row inside the courtroom for today's hearing. Anti-poverty advocates and people from as far as Thunder Bay braved this weather to come down and listen in on to the proceedings. Now, this isn't a case about whether the basic income pilot project is effective or not. What it is about is whether the government acted in bad faith when it moved to cancel it last summer. We're hitting the pause button. Last July, Social Services Minister Lisa McLeod announced she was scrapping the program, saying it was too expensive. It was a move that was blasted by anti-poverty advocates. The pilot was brought in by the Liberals in 2017. The idea? To see if regular payments would help people living in poverty reach their potential. Four people who were part of this pilot have now filed this court challenge. They're arguing the government acted in bad faith, essentially abusing its power to cancel this program years before its slated completion. Today I had a chance to sit down and speak to two of the plaintiffs. It gave me dignity and I wasn't going to food banks. I wasn't eating day old. I would, could buy over-the-counter prescriptions that is not in the realm in a low income. So the cancellation was like the rug being pulled out from underneath me. I just want what was promised to me. I'm hoping that they'll scrap it and basically just reinstate it and let it carry on as it would have um, for the remainder of the three years. That's, that's all I'm asking. Lawyers for the province today argued that the government didn't act in bad faith when it cancelled this program. They also argued that government policy decisions are not subject to review by the courts. Now, the panel of judges today decided to reserve its decision, meaning we won't know what that is until a later date. Meanwhile, the payments in this program are set to expire at the end of March. Farah Morali, CBC News, Toronto.
Well, here's some time-lapse footage from our Toronto Harbour camera when we could see the CN Tower, showing the snow as it blew in this afternoon. Colette will be back after the break with your full forecast. The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. Kyle Kennedy's back with their extended forecast. So the record snow and the bitterly cold temperatures, just the start of the weather story tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to talk about because we have so much going on, Mike, but you're right. Already, it's not official because we're not done with it yet, mm -hmm. but we know we have a new record for snowfall in the state. We've got over 22 centimeters. This is at the reporting station at Pearson. We remain in the winter storm warning, the areas you see in red here. So this is going to be Oshawa through the city, Mississauga. It stretches over towards areas like Pickering towards Markham, up towards Vaughan, all in this because the closer we are to the lakeshore, the heavier amounts we're seeing. We're already getting near those totals, but still there's additional snow to come. It will be winding down, but the winds really won't be winding down. So it's still going to be blowing the snow around and we'll see that even into tomorrow morning's commute. So that's a concern really for some hazardous conditions continuing with visibility being reduced. Minus 10 right now, but look at what I want to point out to you. Windsor's at minus one. And Sarnia is at one. There is milder air with the system. In fact, some of the snow turned over to rain for southwestern Ontario. We're still going to see our temperature come up a little bit tonight, getting closer to the freezing mark before it starts to fall off. And once it falls off, we've got a colder air that's really going to move in for several days this week. You can see some of that rainfall I was mentioning here on our radar. Otherwise, we are dealing with the snow and it's going to stay a snowfall for us. But there is an end in sight if you look back towards the west. And if we play this out on our models and look at the timeline, See how 4 a.m., so by about 3 a.m., already clearing areas like over towards Oakville and Mississauga, Hamilton certainly clearing out. By 4 a.m., we're going to see spots like Pickering and Oshawa, Whitby, you guys clearing out as well as it moves away. Still drifting snow, but the falling snow will be reduced. Tomorrow afternoon, we're likely going to see some flurries coming back. In fact, that pedent potential through the day tomorrow. And then the other thing that happens as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, still looking at strong winds, so we'll have some squalls kind of setting up. Some of those flurries could make their way into the GTA. So I'm kind of keeping some flurries in the forecast, especially as we go into not only tomorrow, but into Wednesday as well. Potential, this is what's yet to come as we're still seeing this moving through. A few more hours yet to go. We're getting near the end of it in terms of the heavier snowfall. 
Our outlook overnight tonight, I said that temperature would be coming up, so minus two, those winds stay strong. They're gonna shift around more towards the southwest. We've had an easterly flow. Tomorrow afternoon, the temperature actually kind of falling through the day, minus eight, it'll feel much colder than that. It's gonna feel more like about minus 13 for us as we get through those afternoon hours. Some windy days ahead, but some cold air coming in. So Tuesday night into Wednesday, falling to nearly minus 20. That's not even factoring the winds in. When you factor those in, feeling like minus 29. The high on Wednesday, only minus 15. Even Thursday, we're still into it. It starts to get better as we get towards the weekend. But the rest of this work week, Mike, is going to be cold, and that's once we get past the snow. Much of snow, but get out and clear the snow tomorrow morning. Well, it's still relatively warm. It'll get colder in the afternoon. That's right. Temperature falling through the day, exactly. Right. Thanks a lot, Colette. You're welcome. Well, the Leafs off tonight, but a big trade to tell you about. Toronto acquiring defenseman Jake Muzzin from the LA Kings. Now, in exchange, the Leafs are sending prospects Carl Grundstrom and Sean Jersey as well as a first round pick in 2019. The 29 year old Muzzin has played in 50 career playoff games, including the Kings Stanley Cup win back in 2014. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Before we go, we want to show you some gorgeous winter photos. The frigid temperatures have frozen the powerful waves of Lake Erie mid-motion, creating the spectacular piece of art. Just another example of the amazing show that ice, snow, and Mother Nature can put together. That's our newscast for tonight. Thanks for watching. Take care of the morning commute tomorrow. We'll see you back here tomorrow night at 11. Good night.